This video is not for persons under the age of 13. By watching this video, you are declaring that you are above 13 years of age. <laughs> Welcome back to today's painting. It's the second part of an acrylic painting on watercolour paper. It's the one of the uh, cow taking a bath in the canal. So in our last one we blocked in the majority of the colour and now we're going to focus in on much closer, tighter areas and get some more tonal values in so join me as we start to do that I will be making some alterations in the image itself I'm going to put some trees in here on this part of the hill so we'll do that but to start with we'll go to the background and we'll make some uh, tonal value adjustments to this area what I've got here is uh, several colours that I've put out uh, some spare white to mix uh, a white that I will tint with some blue and I'm going to leave a little bit of blue on its own uh, as the dark tone so I'm going to take a bit of that on a tiny bit and get this white going to be the lightest of lights this and what I don't want it to be is too opaque so I'm going to really water this down and just get the outer edge of it like that so it, it, it becomes very translucent so you're not destroying the uh, the work that we've done underneath it although I still want it to be able to be seen through though so let's make a start and because light is coming from up here I'm going I'm to just drag across this way and make it a lot lighter uh, trying to avoid that work I've done there as well and see if I can get water on it to start with and see whether it'll um, a little bit bit light or a drying bit there right let's now uh, get some neat of this blue and uh, blend that And the uh, last thing to do with that is um, get some neat white and just have an area around here. I've probably got too much on there at the moment. Let's see if I can... Uh,
Let's blend these in. Something I want to do as well is this area here, these trees, they're also very backgroundy. So I want to get some atmospheric perspective in it. So it's everything in the background is going to be fairly toned down. So I'm just going to get a, a little bit uh, and we'll tone that down as well. Because <clears throat> light's coming that way, so it's going to be uh, fairly light in the direction of the sun. I'm just going to try and like get rid of a little bit of it put it on and then take it off and then you get like a kind of almost like a mist We can bring that down here a little bit as well because it's progressive that toning I don't want any harsh lines uh, in in the background either because it's it's um, very soft focus. And when we go over with darker tones, we'll see how that uh, ends up working. So we'll let this area dry a bit. And uh, we'll come back once that's done. So it's mostly dry. I'm going to get this yellow here, I'll split it off. I'm going to add it to this light blue that I've got. So that's all the, because uh, we like to use up as paint as best we can. And uh, I mentioned that we're going to have some trees in on this bit of the hill. Now, it's not going to be as misted out as what those trees are. So they're going to be a little bit more vibrant, these. So I'm going to make sure that they are a bit more vibrant. They'll still be slightly grey. And uh, these trees come down there it don't follow the actual line of the hill it it 
kind of comes down and almost towards us so getting that in like that and getting some more colours and now let's uh, I'll, I'll clean my brush off get me yellow and then uh, get me blue here and uh, remembering that light is coming from there so I'm, I'm more wanting to make things look uh, on the right hand side of every tree it's going to be slightly darker than it is uh, on the left hand side because it's coming from the left hand side so for now we'll I'm just going to get a bit of blue in there as well a bit too much So we've got the beginnings of those trees there. I'm going to work. Now we've got this nice light green. I'm also going to. That that hill there is fine. I'm 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 not too bothered about. It. Although while we're at it, I might as well. Get another coat in. A little bit more there. Really want you to think that that is quite in the distance. And then uh, That being very light there gives us a, a, a platform for light, uh, lighting in this, but giving it a nice mid value. Right. Um, I may come back and give that a slightly uh, darker area later on that let's do it now blow it there you go and uh, we'll move on to making a a more yellowy bit we'll, we'll do this in a second or two once I'm ready I've got some more yellow and uh, a bit of um, a bit of blue there mixing a, a green And it may be time now to start thinking about making the brush a little bit smaller because it's starting to get to a point where um, I'm overworking the um, the areas 
because of the brush being a little bit too big and I'm, I'm faffing like that, I'm doing that uh, really you just want to be doing things in one stroke if you possibly can I'll just do these little bits here and that's that bit done I'm not going to come in today because that's all going to be detail but uh, let's see if we can get a couple of bits round here just dabbing and what have you and uh, now that whiter area is dry I'm going to go over just to make sure that we know that it's it looks a little bit like sky at the moment so I'm going to, I'm just going to put a a light wash of yellow over it may not see that, I don't know but on uh, my painting um, you can definitely see a, a, a distinct yellow toning in it I'm just stroking the uh, the painting making sure that I've got the angle right for the light and that will be a lot better that there we go and although I won't be doing an awful lot of uh, dark in it up there um, I will but it, when we put the darker tone in it will uh, it will be uh, a lot better than where it is at the moment and as we get more progressive we'll come down here and adding values like that is really important see if we can uh, get a, a few bits in in fact it may be that I just need to do this we'll see because I don't want to make that too tonally diverse in the background it needs to be semi semi muted um, let's see if we can uh,
after getting a bit of definition in this uh, tree uh, group of trees here. Right, we're not far off uh, moving on to the bottom stage, but I'm going to stop using this now because it's it's a bit too clumsy and cumbersome and we're going to go back to a, a a smaller brush now so these are the kind of uh, sizes of brushes that I want to be using for this lower part of the uh, the painting and uh, we'll pick there's a couple of filberts uh, a, a smaller angle brush and uh, a couple of rounded and pointed brushes because uh, it kind of using a, a, a big brush when you're starting to get a bit more detailed uh, you, you're not getting the definition that you use, uh, you need to use so I'll use this to start with and uh, I'm gonna get a bit of blue and a little bit of this white and what I will do for going far up Just want a little bit of uh, yellowiness. So I'm going to, in my yellow area, I'm going to uh, drop a bit of yellow. And it's a very lemony yellow, this, um, this yellow. Let's see if I can uh, incorporate that in there. I'm trying to leave in some of the um, the, the dark tones that we uh, fitted in in the last session. So I don't want it to. Cla I want that to remain a little bit dark because this here is going to be very light and I don't want it to uh, lose its definition that so I'm going to leave that fairly dark that bit even though it probably isn't in the image and as we're getting closer here we are going to get reflections so again it's always worth stuff on what have you like that make sure we've got a bit of dark area in as well because we're still really doing the tonal values in this image so the the most important we've not got to that important part where we glaze over yet Now 
Now down at this part we can make it light because these legs are a lot darker. So that's a, a good point. Getting some textures and stuff in. Especially down here at the bottom because you can almost see uh, individual uh, blades of grass. So I'll, I'll be very, very careful. We want to uh, get that fairly defined. And like I said in the last video, uh, in this area here, we've got like a like uh, like a reed bed and the cows either just behind it or it's sat down in the reeds or something like that so it's one of the things I don't I'm not overly, overly keen on with acrylics is it, it sometimes feels a little bit clumsy. When it comes to things like details. Probably the reason why I don't do a lot of detail in paintings. Because of uh, the me experience of uh, acrylics and things like that. Right, when you're doing a reflection, it's always a downstroke like that. Just make it look like long, long grass by scratching into it while it's still wet. And you've got to work really fast with this uh, particular process uh, when you're scratching in. So I'm going to define a little bit of area there that uh, looks as though it's jutting out a little bit. And then... Uh, Yeah, I don't want to be doing too much of this because for me it it's not absolutely necessary. So I'm just going to like blend that area a little bit of white, a bit too much.
and uh, let's just use some of this up on as um, on as water so we're starting to get there with this uh, I just want to have a quick look around here see if we can do some uh, gardening Right, well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the light tones mostly are done. So we've got to move on to the darker tones and then we'll start to see where things become three-dimensional. So I'll put a little bit of uh, black out there and you have to be incredibly careful how much you use of black because it can be very, very strong. So I'm getting the tiniest of little dips here. I'm going to put it in there. Look how strong that actually is. And I'm then going to start adding some blue to it to give it uh, tinting it really, tinting black. <laughs> Who would have thought? Well, it's one of the, it's the only colour that, uh, uh, well, black is the only thing that can be tinted by other colours, in that sense, because it's it uh, it can be tinted by white, but uh, other colours can uh, make it lighter. It's the only colour that every other colour can make it lighter tiny 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 little bit mm. right so I'm gonna make it and, and again it's it's about being really watery this I don't want to uh, lose the work that we've already done. So once I've worked that into a a decent position, um, I'm going to uh, start defining bits of area like that. And as we've got these darker colours, we can uh, possibly start doing some of the darker areas on the uh, animals as well. Which will be a good thing. So I'm going to... Just the dark areas. So they're going to be like under under the animal, like here, for example, and at the back of the animal, facing away from the uh, light. I'm just really just trying to get a certain amount of definition in it I'm, I'm not getting to the final detail painting yet uh, that would have a, an area as well I'm 
Let's see if I can uh, back of that that chair uh, leg there. So we'll come to this uh, this cow here. When you when you look at the reference image, the cow, although we think of them as as black, they're actually quite grey coloured. So that's the reason why I'm doing this like deep grey kind of uh, colour over it. And then when when it comes to uh, the final uh, uh, glaze of dark, we can add that in strategic places to make it look uh, all the more three dimensional. dark bit there there you go starting to get some um, definition in the darker tones of the uh, the animal So we've just got uh, this cow to go. It's just like that there. Need to get a, an extra glaze of uh, it's almost shadowing. You cannot, I mean, it, it's close enough this group of trees here for you to actually uh, get a tiny bit of uh, shadowing on it. But I don't want to be doing too much because it's still in distance. Detail is not your friend when it's something that's in a distance. Right, something I will do now is uh, the faces. Now the faces are not purely white, so what I'm going to do is there's, there's areas of very, where they're in the shade. I'll block in the white and we'll have to come back over over that uh, later and these these cows are sometimes have white in various other areas as well so. And I'm, I'm really like doing this fairly abstract. We're not doing detail yet, we're just trying to get some values in. We'll get to detail uh, later on. And uh, this particular cow here has a, a bit of white there. You can't really see the uh, the white at this stage because I'm painting onto white.
Perché? Beh, come so qua, eh? There's a little bit here. And I'm, I'm not being massively deliberate here, I'm just basically creating the, the kind of strokes that, that might slightly represent it. I believe it's tails white as well though. So... Again, it's important to make sure that Anything that's near the water is represented in the reflection. So uh, we get that one like that. And we can go back to that grey in now and uh, put bits of grey area in it let me clean my brush off a bit because obviously it's not absolutely pure white everywhere there are going to be areas where Uh, why it's not as strong but I, I don't want to get too focused in on detail at the moment because again as I keep emphasizing this is just the stage of getting values in it's just that the, the some of these areas are slightly complicated and, and need a tiny bit of detailing so we're starting to get there one thing I haven't done yet is add a good look at um, getting this foreground cow uh, some proper colours so that's what we're going to do next right with with these three colours how do I get like a gingery brown the well, first thing I want to do is I'll, I'll get a, a a dab of yellow and then I'll get a dab of blue get them mixed in and we get green all right I'll put a little bit of and that's starting to go to a a brownie color a burgundy brown color I might want to apply a little bit more yellow to that so that's one of my deep tones so all I need to do with that is, is get me my black which is, I've got way too much black on there So that would be the colour I'd have for me really dark tones. And I'm going to get some of this red 
and I get some more of this and I want that to be an orange dip a bit of that there you go and I've got all the colours I need now so let's quickly like we've done most of the tonal work on this cow <clears throat> I just want to start colouring it a little bit so we've got some kind of um, just another colour I might want to build and create is uh, put that there There you go, well, I'll make a start with the lighter tones. And that's almost like a, a fleshy pink colour. And just lightly feathering that on there. And, and just find areas of the painting that are really, really light. Uh, of the cow. And again, re-emphasize that. Um, there's a light area there. I'll, I'll get that in anyway, but... Um, we'll, we'll put some of it in there. And uh, we'll start getting a little bit more, slightly stronger area. And as we get down here, it's going to be a lot darker. And that's where the, the, the tonal values that we put in before uh, will help a lot and take some of that black I'm gonna slightly it's not pure black but it might come out as black when you see it so that's the underside of that leg and again you've got a, a a similar situation there on the other leg and then that goes off into a reflection you've got darkish area there that comes round to a muscle area on its leg and then get some of this brown again and uh, work over this area yeah and, and, and really start working that um, gingeriness gingeriness yeah if I know how to speak it would be great So I'm, I'm working in like circular motions here and uh, trying to think about this animal, it's a, it's a big animal, it's got big muscles and you need to exaggerate it and make it make it look big So I think curves and things like that. It's got like an area there as well that's 
um, quite strong. Just of touches on that there, then it comes down. And you see how um, you may not do, but I can see how that's benefited by doing that undertonal painting originally. It's benefited uh, the final, well, it's not exactly the final uh, glaze, but uh, it, it's benefited this glaze that we've put over it, this first glaze. We will go over and put some other glazing over it, but uh, and make more defined areas. For that, for example. See if we can get some little highlight areas back in. There's a, like I keep saying, there's there's light there. It's it's hitting it quite a lot. And then there's bits like that, just back end it leg. And for the time being, I'm just trying to get some semblance of uh, other bits in there. That's um, this segment of the, it is still what you would consider blocking in really, but it's, it's trying to get various tonal values in. But we're starting to get closer to the, the colours that uh, they ought to be now. We're not going to that uh, extreme of uh, green that we went through last time. I'll just... Uh, do that there and the next time we uh, do a session with this painting it'll be time to have a look at doing the uh, detailing and uh, other things that are necessary to get uh, a real clear definition in the painting so I, I hope you've enjoyed this part of the painting and uh, we will see you again in the next part once I've done this. There we go. So again we'll, we'll, we'll see you in the next session where we'll keep working at this and start defining various detailed areas with much smaller brushes and focusing in on um, key areas of the painting so bye for now <laughs>